good kitten internet. I am back from my trip to Florida. And uh, so this was requested of me by a creator. And I wanted to do this during this Vita anyway. I'm going to show you how I am planning on rec recording Let's Plays and editing them and editing vlogs or anything else. Um, apologies if I seem a little scatterbrained. My brain's not very happy about a whole bunch of things right now, but also the fact that I'm actually recording this intro after I've recorded the entire rest of the thing because I realized I didn't even greet anyone. Um, this is my green screen. You'll notice that it's actually looking green at the moment. We'll take care of that during this. Um, so this is a more advanced version of what I'm have been doing in OBS with, I mean, I've been using green screen for a long time, but you'll notice that I'm not actually using OBS's ability to filter out the green screen. I'm going to be doing that in editing. So, so long story short, I'm going to show you how I am going to be recording videos for Let's Plays in the future in OBS, and then show you how I'm going to be editing them to make them less, well, jank. Talk to you a bit, Internet. So you'll notice a lot of the games that I play, I make little frames for them where I have my face cam off to the side and over to either my right or my left. Remember, it's mirror image because I'm recording. Um, there will be a the gameplay in four by three aspect ratio because I'm playing older games. This is the easiest way to handle a let's play because all of the gameplay footage is on one side. You're on the other side. It doesn't really matter. But what if you're playing a more modern game? What if you're playing a game that is actually a 16 by 9 resolution where you want the entire screen? And what if there isn't a consistent spot for you to block with your face cam? How do you handle that? Well, that's what this first part of the video is going to be showing you. There are two ways that you can handle it. And let me kick this over to me from the past. So apparently we're not going to be going from me from the past because everything is terrible and I have to re-record all of the footage that I just made. Anyway, so this is OBS, uh, as you can tell. Um, there's a very tiny delay with my audio. It is less than a frame. I can't do anything about it. Apologies, but it's so tiny I can't even notice it. But anyway... Um, what we have here is the first of the methods that I've discovered, and this is probably going to be the one that I'm going to be using, which is that we have gameplay, which is over on the left, right over there, and we have camera, which is right here. I'm actually recording this using a second OBS window for reference, <clears throat> which, yes, you can do. Anyway, um, what I've done here is that I don't have... So normally I would... Here, I can do this really fast. Normally, I have a filter here for the chroma key that will make everything behind me transparent. I'm intentionally not doing that this time. I could, but I'm not going to, because I'm actually going to be handling that in editing. It'll actually be really quick. I'll show you when we get there. But what I'm doing is I'm basically recording two separate videos. One of the gameplay, which is over to the left, and one of the camera right here. Uh, when I record the actual test footage, you'll see what I mean. But effectively, this is it. And the second method of doing it, which I'm not going to bother showing because this is already getting late and I need to finish editing this, is that you have two separate OBS sessions. One for gameplay, one for camera. And there's problems with doing that route. If you have two separate OBS sessions you need to make sure that the audio is synchronized on both of them. There's two ways of doing that. You can either do the whole YouTuber clap thing. It's the equivalent of the old Hollywood, like, clapstick type thing. Or you can set up OBS to use a hotkey, and then you just hit the hotkey, which will cause all of your OBS windows to hit record at the exact same moment. Personally, I think this style of having it wider than normal is much better. Let me show you what this actually is. So let me go over to settings. This is the part that didn't record before. So, oh, yeah, before I go to settings. So what you do is that you create a profile. Uh, you'll notice I have a whole bunch of different profiles. Ignore the bottom three. That's just bad. Um, I have a whole bunch of different profiles based off of what settings that I want. In OBS, your profile is 
what dictates what set of settings you use. If you do the dual camera route, you're going to need, or dual OBS route, you're gonna need two different profiles, one for the camera, one for the gameplay. If you do this with just a single super wide recording, like what I'm doing right now, you only need one profile for this. Anyway, let me show you the settings. And first off, video settings, I'm gonna do video. You will notice that this is a very strange aspect ratio. This is not the resolution of my monitor or anything like that. What it is is that 4480 is exactly 1920, plus 2560. 2560 by 1440 is the 16 by nine aspect ratio that I am recording gameplay at. And 1920 by 1080 is the aspect ratio of this camera that I'm talking with you. So I just have them side by side. So the width is 2560 plus 1440, or 2560 plus 1920. <laughs> I'm recording at 60 frames per second because I generally record at 60 frames per second. All of my devices are 60 or higher actually. And you can't go above 60 frames per second on either YouTube or on DaVinci Resolve, which I'll be showing you later anyway. The next thing that we have is audio. I have only been mentioning the video bits, but there's actually a different form of separation that you can do as well, which is for audio. Um, I'm actually going to cancel this and show you down here first. You will notice that both of these audios are set for maximum volume. So the microphone, which is actually clipping slightly, I should probably drop the volume a little bit. Um, sure, we'll have it be 0.5 decibels. It's irrelevant because that's not the right window. That's the right window. Anyway. Um, you want your audio to not clip, which means that you don't want it to be in the red range at all, if you can help it. But beyond that, max them out. Uh, the headset audio, that's actually the audio that's going through my headset right now, is from gameplay. If you, say for instance, have a Discord running, you may end up with a third audio device for getting more people in and having that be separate. but. I'm just going to show you two audio devices because it's really the same process, but more complicated. So one problem that people who are used to using OBS may see immediately is that my headset audio is really loud in comparison to my microphone audio. Yes, my microphone audio is higher, but you would barely hear me right now if it, these were the actual correct settings. But that's actually not what I'm doing. If you go to advanced audio properties, you will see that there's a bunch of settings over here and blah, blah, blah. We don't actually care about any of these. What we care about is over here on tracks. So what I'm doing is that I'm actually recording multiple tracks of audio simultaneously. The first track, actually, you know what? Let's make it like that. Uh, the first track is just going to be the gameplay audio. The second track is just going to be the microphone audio. And the third track is going to be both. Uh, fourth and fifth are actually disabled. Uh, I can show you in the profile. If you go to settings, output audio, you will find that the first track is labeled mic one. I'm actually going to rename that really fast. The second track is labeled mic two. And the third track is labeled Gaffney, because that's what it's going to sound like. Um, honestly, that's more of an emergency thing than anything else. Over on the recording tab, you will notice that we are recording on audio track one, two, and three, which means that we're recording on audio tracks one, two, and three. I know this is just amazing right here. Um, in general, these are all defaults down here. The main key part though, that I wanted to highlight is the fact that I'm recording three audio tracks at once. This way, we have the ability in editing to change the volume on audio tracks as we go. We can make my microphone louder if we need to. Most likely what all that we're going to do though is make the gameplay audio much quieter. That way you'll hear my the dulcet tones of my voice over the gameplay. Also, this means that for any future Let's Play that I do, I can finally go back in and edit things if the audio sampling isn't right and Candace can't hear my voice. 
I figured out how to do it. Hooray! One thing that you'll want to do if you're doing the multiple concurrent recordings is that you're going to want to change this recording path. Uh, in my case, I'm recording to my A drive, which is a scratch SSD. Um, you'll want to put them in separate folders, one for camera, one for um, gameplay, or you'll want to have them named differently. That's just so you don't end up with two exact same files with the exact same name at the exact same time. That doesn't work. But if you're using this method, you don't have to worry about that. And I'm just shoving everything into the same folder. Um, I'm trying to think if there's other things. So there are some filters on my microphone. I might as well show you them. I have it just set for a noise suppression. This is the RN noise suppression. This is NVIDIA's algorithm, or based off of NVIDIA's algorithm, if I remember right. It's fairly good for noise suppression. As long as you have enough CPU power, it's fine. And really, it's probably going to be fine either way. I used to use a noise gate, but I've had problems with this specific microphone in the noise gate. So I'm just not worrying about it. I should really just keep my microphone further away from my face like this. That way I don't peek constantly. My apologies if it didn't quite sound right. And that's mostly it. Um, something to keep in mind when you are looking at this during recording is that you want to see how many frames that you are dropping. In this case, what's over here to the right is how many frames that you are losing due to encoding lag and how many frames you are using due to rendering lag. This is going to be a lie because this isn't actually the vi uh, window I'm recording on. The one I'm recording on has zero for both of these numbers. Uh, it's because I have a really good computer and it doesn't take much to record properly. Not anymore, at least. And that's really about it for the explanation in OBS. Everything else of this video is going to be inside of DaVinci Resolve. So, see you then. All right. So, um, the first thing that I do when it comes to editing these things is that I gather my clips. Uh, this is all, well, <laughs> this one's actually actively recording right now, but these are all the rest of the clips. So I'm just going to cut them. This is my A drive. And yes, in Windows 10, you can label SSDs on the A drive. They don't reserve things for floppies anymore. And I am going to go into the Vita 2022 folder for today, the 17th, and paste. Uh, the bad or the old clips that didn't work. Anyway, now that that's done, let's go into Resolve. So many other windows open. Um, so we're going to start a new project, even though I can use this. This should just go away. <laughs> that did not end well. So we're actually going to start a new project. So that's either opening this untitled project at the start or clicking new project. If you click new project, you can name it now. If you just choose the untitled project, it'll ask you to name it when you hit save. So for this example, we're going to call this the Let's Play Universe Sandbox. And then it opens up to a ridiculously large window because it will always maximize regardless of what you tell it to do. And then when you tell it to not maximize by double clicking on it, it still maximizes. It just pretends that it doesn't. So one moment, I need to play around with the size of it. There we go. Now it should be full screen. I haven't done anything other than resize. So not too surprising that there's weird bugs. For reference, DaVinci Resolve is a free product and it's ludicrously overpowered. I couldn't tell you what most of these options do. I can't figure out a lot of them. It was originally meant for color grading work. We're not doing most of that. We're doing basic editing. So the first thing we want to do is go over to the edit pane. It's the tab on the bottom part. Uh, so for reference, the tabs are media tab. This is for media organization. I don't use it. I don't like it. Um, there's the cut tab. It's to cut clips, but you can do that in the edit tab. So I don't really understand why the cut tabs there. I'm sure there's a good reason for it, but whatever. There's the Fusion tab. This is for special effects that you do. We're not going to be touching that for this. There's the Color tab. Once more, I'm not touching it. There's the Fairlight tab, which is for editing music. We're not touching that. And finally, there's the Delivery tab, or the Rocket Chip. We will be doing that at the end. So let's go to the Edit tab. And let's dump in our clips. Let me reopen this really fast. 
and we'll just dump in all of these, even if we don't end up using them all. So when you dump in clips for the first time, it'll ask you if you want to change the project frame rate. This is to make sure that your project's frame rate is the same as whatever the first clip is that you dump in. All of my clips are recorded at 60 frames per second. I think DaVinci Resolve defaults at 24. So we're going to go ahead and change frame rate. It will dump in and do a preliminary preview of things. I don't use the preview feature too much because I can just... I mean, you can look at the preview this way, but you can tell that this isn't actually all that useful. So what we actually want to edit in this particular case is the most recent one. I'm going to ignore the rest for the time being. And what we're going to do is that we're just going to drag and drop it over. You'll notice that there are three audio tracks that appear when we do that. What it's doing is it's adding all of the audio tracks that we recorded. Remember when we were on the OBS section, we actually told it to record three audio tracks. The first audio track being microphone, second audio track being gameplay, third audio track being both. Might be the other way around though. We're going to need to figure that out. So let's just do that right now. Let's handle audio first. Audio is the easiest thing to handle first. If you were recording two different video clips, you would, or if you had two different files with different audio tracks, let's say you had a microphone on one and gameplay on the other, you may need to drag both clips in. But for right now, I'm only going to be touching audio, so I'm only going to be dragging one clip. You'll see what I mean in a bit. So first, let's go ahead and mute all but one track. Hit play and figure out what it is. That's gameplay. So we're going to expand this a bit. We're going to rename it. I accidentally clicked my trackball while I was typing. We're going to expand the second one. I'm going to confirm, but I'm pretty sure that this is microphone. Let's find out. This for the purpose of yep, an microphone. example recording. So you'll notice that there's a bit of hiccup when you first play something. That's normal. Don't worry about it. It's not going to render that way. And then the last one is both. Is that how you spell cacophony? Or is it? And it doesn't matter because we're actually going to be just keeping this muted anyway. And in fact, so the first thing, since I'm recording the extra track for both combined, so you can hear how it is, I wouldn't actually recommend doing this yourself. But this is actually the way the game is going to sound if we kept everything together. All right, so I am recording this for the purposes of an example record. So you can tell that it's really hard to hear what I'm saying. I mean, in this case, um, Universe Sandbox actually has relatively calming music so it's not too big of a deal but if this was say really any other video game whatsoever i would be completely drowned out at this point so that's the reason why we're going to be doing this editing so what we want to do first off i've muted the last audio but what i'm actually going to do is unlink so if you right click there's a link clips option clips will be linked audio and video by default what that means is that the video portion of your video clip and the audio portion of your video clip will be treated as one object. So you drag one around and the other one moves with it. We're going to unlink them temporarily. We'll relink it when we're done. And then we're going to completely delete this last track and then relink. Oh, that's right. We don't need to relink yet. Um, so we've completely deleted the cacophony track and then we're going to decrease the volume of the gameplay track. So if you select just the gameplay track, up in the top right corner, there's a, assuming that you have the inspector pane open, please keep the inspector pane open, um, you will see on the audio tab, this little volume, and you can drop the volume. This is in decibels for reference. So every 10 decibels that you reduce something is reducing the volume by half. So minus 10 decibels is 50%, minus 20 decibels is 75%, and so on. So we're going to try this at minus 15-ish. Just make it minus 15. Um, how does it sound? All right, so I am recording this for the Sounds purposes pretty good, actually. of... 
might as well use this to plug my own role-playing system. Okay, that sounds pretty good, so we'll keep it that way. And then we're going to relink the clips. This way, if we do any edits, we don't have to worry about having to edit everything at once. That would be absurd. So if you want to do additional audio changes, and before you relink the clips, let's say, for instance, you wanted to feature a key piece of music and increase the volume at that point, what you can do is put in keyframes. This little diamond over to the right of things is indicating a keyframe. When you put one in, it will guarantee that that volume is that exact number at that exact time. So it will be minus 15 decibels from the base audio clip at the start of the clip, which is where we're at right now. So what you can do is, hey, look, in a little bit, I want you to put in another keyframe and I want you to increase this to plus 30, which would be horrible, by the way. I'm not actually going to keep this. So you can actually see a little bit on the preview right by where my mouse is that there's a ramp up in audio. What it, It's going to adjust it over time, where by the time that 5 seconds and 28 frames strikes, it will be at plus 30 decibels instead of minus 15. Again, I'm not going to do that. That's dumb. But I just wanted to show you what it was. So... Again, this is more useful if you wanted to highlight specific music of a game. Chances are you're probably not going to want to do that, so don't worry too much about it. There's other options that you could do in here as well, including setting an equalizer, and I'm not covering that. This video is already going to be stupid long. So we're done with audio. I'm going to relink these clips again. Now we need to deal with video because, as you can tell, the video looks a little weird. First off, we're not at the correct resolution. So DaVinci Resolve will, by default, have everything be at a timeline resolution of 1080p. We don't want it to be 1080p. In this case, I want this to be 1440p because that's the native resolution of my monitor. So this is just for timeline processing. It doesn't actually change any of the previews or anything like that, so you don't have to worry about things. It's just for timeline processing. I wanted to get that out there now because this is usually the point where I remember. So don't worry about it. From here, we want to edit the video. And the trick to using the side-by-side, -side, one side being camera, one side being gameplay, is that we're actually going to be inputting in, we're going to be importing the video twice. So one of these going to be gameplay and then we're going to have another track that's camera and then a final track called effects um, you may end up having more tracks than this depending on what you're doing how many bits of text you're going to have on the screen like if you're labeling things and explaining things you may have multiple tracks but I'm trying to keep this fairly simple so this is our gameplay one what we want to do is eliminate the camera part. So we're going to crop from the right. So if you look over on the inspector on the video tab under cropping, we're going to increase this until you, there's no more green. <clears throat> this should actually be 1080 pixels wide. It's not quite for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. That might have just been me being really lazy in positioning things. So this actually ends up 1090, I think. 1092? Yeah, 1092. Don't worry about it. Since you have a green screen behind you or some other obvious color, it's really easy to figure out where it's at. And then we need to zoom in because we want this clip to, ooh, looks like we actually still have a little bit more green. So, 1093, there we go. We want to zoom in uh, and then change the position where the gameplay is in the center. Like that. So at this point, we only see the gameplay. All right, so I am recording this for cameras all gone. That's great. If 
this is for this video. This is probably going to be the only thing that we're going to bother with. I'll show a couple more advanced things in a bit, but for the most part, that's it. Now we need the camera. And what we're going to do is that we're going to drag the same video clip. Now, one dumb thing about the way Resolve works is that if I drag this over to um, video two, it will assume I need to use audio too, which will overwrite your microphone. Drag this to a different one. In fact, use the audio bits and drag it there. You can always move the video to the correct column later. It's fine. I'm going to drag this over to audio three. Then I'm going to immediately right click, unchoose link clips, and delete audio track three. This isn't the right video. Whoops. Pff. Hold on a moment. <laughs> we want this one. There we go. Yeah, it should have multiple, more than two audio tracks, or more than one audio track. Anyway, sorry. Um, we actually want this at the start. You want to make sure that these two video clips are going to be together, and we'll link them in a bit. But anyway, we have a whole bunch of excess audio. So we're going to unlink clips, delete these three tracks, move this down to camera, and now we're going to edit this video. We're going to crop from the left this time. This should be 2560 pixels, it's not. Oh, I know why it's not, because it's relative. So when you import clips into DaVinci Resolve, the timeline resolution is the, er, it will import the clip as though the entire width of the clip fits in the timeline resolution, which means it's technically zoomed in. That's the reason why none of the numbers are adding up. But we want to keep going until we hit gameplay. Unfortunately, gameplay is solid black, so it's a little hard to tell. We're going to zoom in a bit to... Try to get exactly where we need to go. I mean, honestly, it's not that big of a deal if we go a little bit further, because we're probably going to need to crop that green screen anyway. And this is going to be increased a bit. We're going to let it zoom in some. We'll zoom out when we actually position things. This just makes things easier to see. So I'm zooming to an extra 75%, moving this toward the middle, and then we're going to crop everything that's black. So we're going to crop the bottom a bit. And if there was any imperfections that you wanted to crop out or anything like that, like if my green screen here wasn't entirely blocking everything, you'd want to crop out the corners. You get the idea. You crop out what you want and then place it on your screen where you feel. Um, I'm going to move this over to the bottom left corner. Actually, I'm going to move this to the bottom right corner. We're going to zoom out some more. I think that size of a picture of me is more than sufficient. So we're going to put it in the bottom right corner. Now, obviously, we haven't touched the green screen yet, but that's going to be really easy. I'll show you how to do that momentarily. But in order to make things easier for us, I am going to choose everything and relink clips. This way, if we move the clips around, everything gets moved around in a single unit. We don't have to worry about resynchronizing audio. Everything will just work. This is why I like the side-by-side -side mechanism for this. It's really easy to keep everything synchronized. You don't have to worry about, oh no, did the two clips start at the exact correct millisecond or anything like that, because it's just one video clip. You're just doing editing. You're duplicating the video clip and doing editing to only show one thing at a time. All right, now that we're done with getting video synchronized and placed, we need to work on that green screen. This used to be a much more arduous process. It's actually fairly easy now. It's not the best in the world. If you want to make it perfect, there are better ways of doing it. But this is more than good enough, as long as you have good enough lighting conditions and you're not wearing green. If you're wearing green, you're gonna be a ghost. 
or a headless horseman. So what we want to do is over on the left side, we have this effects toolbar. If you don't see an effects toolbar, make sure it's selected from the top over here. In the effects toolbar, we want to go down to resolve effects. And we want to scroll down until we get to resolve effects key. It's in alphabetical order for each of these sections. And what we want is the 3D keyer. Drag the 3D keyer over to the clip that you want to key, which will actually add it to everything the way this is set. Hmm. Actually, you may want to unlink clips. Now that I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and unlink clips temporarily. Drag it over to the clip that you want. And then we can relink clips because we don't need to worry about that. So you'll see that there's a little FX symbol in the bottom left hand corner of the clip in your timeline. That's what you want to see. We'll select the clip. Oh, we need to keep it unlinked for now. That's fine. Select the clip and then go to the effects tab on your inspector. In fact, also while you're at it, you're going to need to change this drop down here from transform to open FX overlay. This will become, this is what's needed to actually do your green screen. So you want to choose a frame. It doesn't matter which frame. Um, I would recommend choosing a frame that is fairly representative of all of the green that you need to go through. I'm going to choose a frame that is pretty easy for me to see, like this one. I'm staring into the void, I swear. So again, on the effects tab, we're on open FX and you have three options for the 3D keyer. You can either choose to pick a color, subtract a color or add a color. We want to use the picker to start. And what you're going to do is that you're going to drag a line by holding down the left click button over the green area. You want to keep doing it until you get rid of most of the green. At least we're going to add a bit more get the color, uh, get the corners, and then to get the side. You'll notice that there is still some green reflection inside of my glasses. I could actually add that as well, which is what I just did. And now that is all of the green in the image. And when you hit play, system. Uh, this is the solar system that the planet Sharna is located in. Sharna you being... is actually fairly good. There's a little bit of a green highlight around my face. If we wanted to get super into the weeds, you can get rid of that using other settings and color grading and so on. And I'm not going to worry about that. This is more than good enough. So again, that was going to the, that was adding in the 3D keyer into the clip of choice, going to, and making sure that your drop down menu here says open FX overlay, going to the effects tab of inspector, choosing the 3D keyer and selecting, picking colors, adding to colors, and removing colors if you happen to, say, put a scratch over your face. That's it. We're done. The entire thing is color-coded and, or, is, um, green screened. I'm going to show you a couple more things that I do for my clips, because they're going to be useful for Let's Players or anybody else. There's a couple more things that I wanted to show you that would be useful for a Let's Play and doing editing on it. Uh, the first is something that I tend to do, which is to add a title at the start. Um, I do, I've been doing, if you haven't noticed from my vlogs, I've actually been doing a relatively fancy way of doing it. So I'm going to show you how I do this. So over on the left, under the effects pane, once more, if it's not open, make sure you have it selected. And you want to go to titles. Now there's a whole bunch of different automated effects in these titles. You can do like a fade into the uh, fade from the background out into the corner of it. You can do a center reveal. You can do what looks like digital glitches that are going on. You can even do a zipper type thing where it just appears that way. There's a bunch of those fancy effects. And if you want to use those, those are fine. I'm doing a little bit more custom and simpler one. So what I'm going to do is choose text plus and I'm going to drag it over to the effects pane or the effects timeline from here. I'm selecting it. Oh, let's relink these while I'm thinking about it before I do bad things. Um, I'm selecting this one. I'm not going to call it custom title. We're going to call this universe sandbox runner.
universe hand box next to them. And we are going to align it to the right anchor. That way everything ends up right aligned. So that's the way I want it to appear. We're going to change the font to be something not that. There's a lot of different font choices. Unfortunately, as I found out the last time, I don't have a great space themed font. It looks really ugly. So I'm just going to choose this one, JSL Ancient, whatever it is. And I'll get to that in a bit. We want to reposition its location. So I could change a whole, there's a lot of settings in here. Feel free to look through it as you see fit. It's a little ridiculous. I'm not going to worry about it. I am instead just going to go to settings, change its position. Oh, right. The stupid cropping. <sighs> Grumble. You're going to want to change the size where it actually all displays because I don't know why it does it that way. I'm sure there's a reason. I just don't know what it is. Make sure all of your words are displayed before you do anything. Position things where you want it on the screen, which is going to be like that. And in theory, you're done. But the reason why I'm choosing the special effects is that I want just a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is back in the title tab, scroll down to write on, and you want to click on this dot. This is what's called a keyframe. Um, and I don't actually know if that's what they call it in this, but that's what I'm going to call it because that's the term used in animation. And this can actually be used for audio and video, but it's still the same concept. So we want to create a keyframe here and we're going to drag the right on to zero. That means that nothing is going to be on the screen at the start. Then we're going to choose something halfway through. Um, this clip is really short over here where my mouse is highlighting over is the zoom. We're going to just zoom in a bit so it's easier to get to. And part of the way in, eh, about there. So we want it two seconds in. Yeah, two seconds in. I am going to click on the keyframe again, and we're going to have all of the text visible. Now you will see that there will be a little preview thing right above the effects thing. It's currently all red. That means that it hasn't started rendering. As it renders, it starts going more and more blue. Once it finishes all the way across, it will be fully rendered and it won't be stupid slow when you try to hit playback. I recommend waiting until it's fully rendered because otherwise it's going to be jittery. It will be fine for the actual final render, just trying to play back anything that's not partially rendered is a nightmare. Finally, what I want to do is fade it out after a bit. Um, when you mouse over any of these clips, you will actually notice that there's a little anchor point on each on the top right and top left part of the clip. These are fade in and fade out respectively. I want this to fade out. So we're going to go with 30 frames from the end. So half a second, it'll start fading out. Once more, wait for it to render. Start at the start and take a look at what it looks like. All right, so I See? am recording this and for then it quickly the fades out. Of nice, huh? An example recording. So this is going to be fairly quick, but I might as well. So we've got that. The last thing that we want to do is to try to zoom in on something to emphasize something on the screen. Actually, no. Um, next thing we want to do is move around the portrait. But there's going to be a part of this that my camera location is going to cover up information. Just need to skip through. You'll notice that this, trying to scrub through footage tends to be very slow. We only have a little over three minutes of gameplay footage. Yeah, there it is. So when I select on something like on Wii, my shoulder's kind of covering up information. We don't want that. So we're going to Choose an arbitrary point. Here is probably fine. Oh, we're going to need to unlink this uh, because we only want to modify the camera. We're going to choose an arbitrary point. Um, and we're going to press the same keyframe thing on position and zoom. Then we're going to choose an earlier point where we start moving around say over here, do the same thing. Then we're going to use these arrows. These arrows will bounce between your keyframes. 
so you don't have to guess exactly where it's at. You already have it marked. And for the second one of these, we're going to have our position. I always do that. Move over to the other side and flip. Oops, I forgot the way it works. It'll be weird just because. Oh, that's right. You can't do animated flip. Never mind. We're not doing the flip. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a bit tired. It's late. And I went to sleep, at, or I woke up at 3 in the morning. Okay. So what this is going to do, let's go at the start of it again and hit play. Whole plane. Assistant. Uh, this is the solar See? system. That you notice that I am slowly system. shifting yeah, over. Being... You can speed things along if you want. You can slow things down. Works perfectly fine. Formerly Final Fantasy um, I'm just doing this for example purposes. Anyway, you actually won't find Charna on this big map because this is way too big of a map. I mean, too close. Uh, you can see there's see? planets out here. This is the and now, we're not covering up the information. Admittedly, it's really tiny, so, you know, it's not going to be great and visible anyway, but this is an example. Now we're going to do a couple more types of effects. And so on. Um, the Sharna planet itself is actually a moon. It orbits Eshi Solsharna. Eshi Solsharna um, is a hot Jupiter. The Sharna planet itself is actually a moon. It orbits Eshi Solsharna. Okay. So right where it turns into Eshi Solsharna, what I want to do is I'm going to select the gameplay footage. Click on zoom in position. And what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on it. The reason why I do both zoom and position regardless is that sometimes I want to move the position only. Sometimes I want to zoom in, which is also going to need to move the position. I'm just in the habit of clicking on both. So we're going to zoom quite a bit. And then we're going to move into a position where we see Essie Solsharna. Make it really big and obvious. I did that wrong. Hold on. I tend to do this. You want, and this is the point where we want to start zooming. We want to end zooming. I'm going to go choose there. You want to edit the end point, not the start point, because otherwise weird things happen. And then we're going to want to, well, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, We'll go with here. We'll zoom it back to where it was. So we're going to throw in another keyframe. So the middle keyframe is the one that we're going to want to zoom in a whole heck of a lot and reposition. Like so. Now, I could do fancy things like keep an existing background behind there or throw in a kitty because it's me. I'm not going to bother in this case. It's that's just throwing in an image in the background. It's not particularly difficult. So what does this actually look like? Well, let's scroll back and hit play. S.E. Sharna is a hot Jupiter, which is a gas giant that's very close to its sun. And this particular gas giant is actually so massive. So that it zooms in quickly and zooms out slowly. You'd probably want to keep it there for a period of time. Right now it would have actually I'm just being ignited into silly. Um, and then and the there's one goes. more I want to do. Um, planet that is a little bit smaller than Earth, and it's also a little bit cooler than Earth, but like the average temperature is above freezing year round for the entire planet. So, and it's very heavily waterlogged. Uh, it's right at the end that I want to do this, and I want to show you this part. I'm going to pause. Expand this. Okay. Really fast, and you can actually see the terrain on the planet. Okay, right here. I want to freeze frame at this point. So what I'm going to do is right click. And what I want is to enable the retime controls. And we're going to click on this down arrow right here and choose freeze frame. 
This is also the same process that you would do for speeding things up and slowing, slowing things down for reference. But we're going to freeze frame. Oops. Right. All done. Backing up. Um, I want to relink everything because otherwise only we would only freeze frame the video. It wouldn't stop the audio. So that's kind of useless. So let's link the clips back and then let's add the freeze frame. Freeze frame. Now you'll notice everything is freezing, not just like not just the video for the gameplay footage. And then we're going to choose the gameplay. We're going to add in another zoom point, but we're going to actually going to do this really fast. So two frames in, we're going to throw in a second one of these. And then when the freeze frame is over, we're going to throw in another one. And then two frames after, we're going to put everything back the way it was. So there's a bunch of keyframes in here. And the reason why we're doing that is to do a quick zoom or position in the center. Zoom in on the planet. The planet is actually all that we care about. So we're going to zoom in a whole heck of a lot, make it where the planet's basically the only thing on screen. Like that. And what I'm doing is that I'm copying and pasting the zoom in position. That way the next point will be in the same position and then it will go back to normal. So what does this look like? Like this. this really fast and you can actually see the terrain on the planet like that see it's kind of nifty it's a brief little freeze frame it yeah, doesn't last very long just be a quick recording so yep that's it again you can change it instead of it being a freeze frame to be a fast forward or anything like that it's the same process so yeah i've already recorded 36 minutes um this is pretty much it. Unfortunately, I didn't have a kitty over here this time because my kitties kept interrupting me the previous time instead. Um, so no kitten to see this time, Internet. Sorry. But yeah, this is generally how I'm editing things. Uh, let's go ahead and save it and I'll show you how I render. But that part's the easy part. So I just hit save project. And then we're going to go over to the rocket ship. So this is the default screen that you see from this. We're going to change some settings. Uh, first off, if you wanted to render this for your own purposes, we would probably want to choose custom and a relatively high quality. Uh, this is rendering at best quality, which is ridiculous. High is already a huge file size. If you want to shrink things, you might want to go with medium for storage purposes. Or you can just keep the copy that you're going to get for YouTube or whatever other platform that you want. Um, there's a lot of things listed here. In my case, my videos are uploaded to YouTube. So I'm choosing the YouTube option. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is change the resolution because again, nobody seems to believe 1440p exists. And I'm gonna go ahead and save this. We're going to save this in Vita 2022. Normally I save it in the root of Vita 2022, but the thing that I'm rendering here isn't technically Vita. What I'm recording right now is, and we're just going to call this P box. Now, if you have everything set up for integration into YouTube, which I technically do, but it probably, I haven't touched it in years at this point, you can actually have it upload at the same time. There's a lot of good advantages to that. For instance, you can add in chapter markers inside of DaVinci Resolve rather than having to do it in the YouTube editor. You can add in subtitles in DaVinci Resolve rather than doing it in the YouTube editor. I have not done either one, so I'm not going to record that part of the footage, but it gives you an idea of you can do everything in the same pane. Also, you can tell your computer to shut down after DaVinci's done doing it. I'm not going to worry about that, though. 
So I'm just going to save it locally and then I'll upload it later. Um, I keep all of these settings defaults. The reason why you'd want to keep it defaults and the reason why you want to use the YouTube render settings pane is because YouTube is very specific as to what it wants for exact settings for encoders and so on. If you happen to match all of those settings, YouTube takes far less time to render the video or process the video than it would if you didn't. So that means you don't have to have the video rendered twice. Saves a lot of time, actually increases video quality a little bit too. So it's kind of a win-win. You just hit add to render queue. Again, you can render for other platforms as well if you want. I don't know why there's a Dropbox specific format or audio only. I guess I can actually see audio only. I don't know for Twitter though. That one doesn't make sense. But if you were a multi-major platform and you wanted to render for multiple video platforms at the same time, you could, and you would just keep adding to your render queue. Um, once you've added everything, which for anything that I do, this is all that I do is just one YouTube video. I click render all, and then it starts rendering. It'll do a short preview. Um, you'll notice that it's going to be skipping a whole heck of a lot of frames while it's doing the preview. That's normal. There's a little progress thing over here. Um, it's not going to be accurate at the start. It'll be accurate probably about halfway through. So I'm going to guess that this is going to take about a minute and a half to two minutes. I'm not going to stand here or sit here and talk with you the entire time, most likely, but it goes fairly fast because I have a fairly powerful computer. Um, rendering for DaVinci Resolve uses both your graphics card and your CPU, but primarily CPU in my case. GPU-wise, it's not using a whole bunch, if I remember right. I don't know. Let's take a look. Um, so CPU, it's using lots. Keep in mind, I'm also recording at the same time. So, no, oh, no, no. It's using all of my GPU. Um, <laughs> in fact, I am dropping frames on my recording right now. So, or at least I did at the start. Anyway. Oh, I can show you a kitty cat. Kitty cat, kitty, kitty, kitty cat, it's a boo kitty, boo kitty cat. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go. I'll talk to you next time, internet, because I need to edit what I just now recorded. Bye, internet.